when the polymer is dissolved in the solvent, right, so they, they adopt different conformation depending on molecular weight, depending on the solvent it, the, it's, uh, it interacts with. If it likes a solvent, the polymer will be in a very expanded uh, uh, chain conformation, right? And if it is in a poor solvent, the polymer will be very compact. And this goes to nanoparticle or brushes. So, so what we have here is that we have a a, uh, a system where if you if you put the solution, the polymer solution, right, and then draw it up into two bulbs, okay, and then you let this uh, solution flow to a capillary, a capillary, and when solution flows to a capillary, the smaller the capillary, the more resistant to flow. And that tells you something about the structure of the uh, material in the solution, a polymer or a particle. So it provides information on the size of the polymer, the flexibility, and the shape in solution, right? And how this uh, particle interact with the solvent. If it likes the solvent, it will expand. If it doesn't like the solvent, it compacts. So that morphological change can be determined by what we call polymer solution viscosity. Okay, so the technique is a very, very simple technique. Uh, you just have to buy the tube like this, have a stopwatch, and then you can use your mouth or you can use a suction bulb and then draw the solution into these two bulbs. So, so that's what undergrad students do, but there are many different uh, um, system that one can use, okay? So these are just an illustration of the three different types of tubes, okay? The design are different depending on who made them and depending on uh, what you want to measure. So the key is the capillary. So this is the capillary, right? Capillary. So you want to basically draw the solution up to the bulb and you measure the volume from A to B Right, if the liquid flow from mark A to mark B, this is the fixed volume. You know the volume, you know the time, then you can calculate the flow rate. Okay, so that's essentially how the technique works. So the key is to be able to put your dissolved polymer solution, or in, in the case for Fatima CNC with mucin this solution, you put it here. And then you suck it up to above here, and then you you remove this uh, uh, pressure, and then you let the thing flow. Okay, so this is typically what you can do when you can set up a, a temperature control, and then you can have different bulb, and then you have a stopwatch, and then you can uh, draw the liquid up, and then measure the time it takes to for it to flow. So what we have bought, this is an instrument. It's uh, actually quite expensive. This instrument costs about $40,000. The reason why it is expensive is because, right, you have the YouTube like this, kept in a silicon bath. They are controlled at a temperature plus minus 0 0.01 degrees Celsius, right? And then the system has some pumps and vacuum and pressure to be able to clean the tube automatically. After, after each test, the system will just pump the water and clean this tube twice, and then wash it, suck off the water, and then pump acetone, clean it twice, and remove it, and then blow air through to dry the tube and then this thing drops. So there's a, this uh, sensation valve that you can push it up and then you press run, the system run by itself. So I'm gonna do some training on Friday to explain to you how the system works. Okay, so what is the basic uh, principle of the equation? So the, the basic principle is very straightforward, right? So you have the solvent, right? And then you have the solution. So all you have to do is, first of all, you want to measure the time it takes 
for fixed volume of the solvent because the bulb is fixed, right? So because the bulb is is fixed, the bulb is fixed, the volume is fixed. So all you got to do is you you basically measure the time it takes for the solvent to flow, right? The volume is constant, so the time is essentially what you do, and then you prepare different concentration of solution and then you measure the time t and t naught the relative viscosity is basically the time of the polymer solution divided by the time of the solvent takes to flow and that is equal to eta on eta naught okay so that's very straightforward so all you do is the instrument measure the time okay so then you 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 want to get the specific viscosity which is actually relative relative is this minus one divided by the concentration of the polymer in the solution so that you vary you measure the time at different concentration let's say you have five concentration you measure the time and that is equal to this simple equation t is you measure concentration is the solution you prepare so that's one equation the other equation is the inherent viscosity, which is actually the log, the natural log of the relative viscosity divided by the concentration. Eta relative is actually the T on T naught, right? So that's very straight. So you know the concentration because you prepare four or five different polymer solution. You measure the time of the solvent and the time of the polymer solution and concentration one, two, three, four, five. So those are the two data that you present. So then a very important parameter that you need to calculate is the intrinsic viscosity, right? And that is given by the limit of this when C becomes zero, okay? So what it means is that, so there are two very famous equation which are called the Huygens and Kramer's equation. So the Huygens equation if you plot either SP, this is easily done. So this is T minus T naught on T naught times C. Okay. And that is equal to the intrinsic viscosity plus KH is the Huygen constant. And this is gives you the polymer solvent interaction times either because it's square times C. Whereas the Kramer equation is given by this similar, but now you have minus. Okay. So all you got to do is to plot eta sp on c and ln eta r on c versus c. And to do that, you have you will get this two curve. Okay. So these are five concentration, right? You can formulate it either in the Huygen format or in the Kramer's format, and then you extrapolate, and you can see. The, the, the intercept is the intrinsic vis viscosity, and that is the intrinsic viscosity that you can determine. And then the slope is equal to KH times intrinsic viscosity squared. So that allows you to get two very important parameters. So this is just a real data of uh, four data points of different concentration, right? And then the intercept is intrinsic viscosity. The slope is kh times intrinsic viscosity squared. So you know this from here, and then you can calculate kh. So kh is a very useful term that gives you the interaction of the polymer to the solvent. Okay, so these are real data for uh, many concentration here. So you can see, and then the asymptote at c equal to zero, and this intrinsic viscosity, the Flow of this is kh square kh times eta viscosity square square. So this other date da da data that you can obtain by just doing those measurement of different concentration and then extrapolate to zero. So a very useful uh, system that people do is to to get what we call the Mark Hawking Sakaruda equation. This equation basically relates the intrinsic viscosity to the molecular weight by two constants, which is K and alpha. So K and alpha, 
you can go to the uh, polymer handbook table that will give you K and alpha at the, with a particular solvent or particular polymer at a given temperature. So which means that if you have a polymer, you make a polymer, you don't know the molecular weight. So all you're going to do is to prepare this polymer in a given solvent and then do the measurement and get ether. And then from there, you can get the molecular weight of your polymer that is unknown. So that's a very useful uh, technique to get molecular weight, viscosity average molecular weight. So this is one of the usefulness of the intrinsic viscosity. So here is the Markovic equation, which is given by this. So if you take a log of this, you will get a straight line, right? Alpha is a slope. So this is the relationship between the intrinsic viscosity versus molecular weight. And that allows you to determine. More. So once you know the intrinsic viscosity, you can then determine the molecular weight of a particular polymer and things like that. So there are people now who are starting to use this. There's some theory that allows you to calculate the aspect ratio, the length on the diameter of CNC or nanoparticle. Okay. So these are just some example of those constants. So you can go to the, the handbook for several polysaccharide, cellulose, amylose, back strand in different solvent at different temperature. And K and alpha are system you can get from the handbook, right? So then if you, if you let's say you, you buy an amylose, you don't know the molecular weight, you can either dissolve it in DMSO or, or, or water, get the intrinsic viscosity, and then from here, you can calculate the molecular of your unknown polymer. So another example of lignin cellulose xylang, where K and alpha are known, and then you can calculate the intrinsic viscosity to get you the molecular weight, okay? The degree of expansion or shape of the molecular coil can be determined by alpha value, right? right? And uh, uh, so, for example, different material have different types of conformation. So this is a, a data for casein, a protein. This is a relative viscosity versus concentration. You can see, right, there's two slopes. So this transition is what we call the overlap concentration from dilute to concentrated. So this is a semi-dilute region. So you could use this technique to identify when your material changes from low concentration where the interaction intra to high concentration where it's inter. So I think Fatima's result just now shows that for the CNC with mucin, a lower concentration is below the curve, high concentration is above the curve. So there could be a reason for those sort of phenomena, and you can explain some physics due to intramolecular interaction versus intermolecular. Intermolecular means between particle of different particle. Intramolecular means within the same particle. Okay. So this is another example of a data done by a group in in Montreal where they look at the carboxylic CNC. Right a different pH and they can plot relative viscosity versus volume fraction or concentration and they can get those uh, uh, relationship. And then they did it for, for this data, they get uh, relative viscosity versus pH. You can see there is a very significant increase at pH about seven. So talk, thinking about the behavior of this uh, CNC wheat the carboxylic acid group and how the pH affects their conformation. Okay, so I'm just describing to you uh, some of the parameter or, or physical properties that you can extract from this sort of viscosity measurement. So the intrinsic viscosity measurement can be used to determine the molecular weight, the quality control of polymer that you make obtain information on polymer solvent interaction, 
and then provide some insights on aggregation or association. So if the mucin interact with the CNC, or if kydosan binds to the CNC, it's going to impact the aggregation and confirmation. And the interest viscosity measurement can provide information on this. Okay. So simple techniques to conduct parametric study on the effect of pH, temperature, ionic strength, polymer structure, and conformation in low concentration, where you cannot do using the rheometer. So then you use this YouTube viscometer to probe the microstructure of the interaction of different types of molecules with CNC and how then you can use that to explain the confirmation in dilute solution. Okay, so that's all I want to, to, to comment on, just to give you a, a, a general overview of the technique. And then uh, on Friday, at, um, I'm going to do some training. So if you think that you're going to, uh, uh, um, besides those two people I mentioned, if you feel that you want to join the training, then you let me know. And then uh, I would uh, um, inform you. So Lian is going to prepare several concentrations of CNC. We're going to do a, a test on CNC just to get used to the instrument. And then from there, uh, you can then design your own experiments and use instrument to conduct viscosity measurement at low concentration. OK, is there any question? I'm going to do a PDF version of this file and send it to you afterwards. Any question? So Fatima, you, you understand how the instrument can be useful for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, there's no question. Um, so are there any issues in the lab that we need to discuss?